My name is Alan Hawes, and this is PSOC 101. The third use of the TCPWM component is as a timer. In this example, we will time how long a switch is held down and translate that into the brightness of the LED by reusing the PWM that we set up in the last lesson. Copy the PWM project and add a TCPWM timer component. Double click it to open the customizer. Then rename the component, enable four inputs, the start, stop, capture, and reload. These inputs will appear as extra terminals on the left-hand side of the symbol. In a moment, you will connect the input pin from the switch to all four of these terminals. But before that, modify the modes so when you press the switch, the timer starts, and when you release it, the timer stops. The pin is active low, and so choose Falling Edge for the Start and Reload inputs, and select Rising Edge for the Capture and Stop inputs. Also, enable the Interrupt on Capture event. This configuration will cause the timer to reset its counter register to zero and begin running when the switch is pressed. It will stop when the switch is released and simultaneously issue a capture event, resulting in an interrupt. Back in the schematic, wire the switch to all four of the new inputs. You still need a clock for the timer. To make the math easy, drop in a new clock component and change its frequency to 1 kilohertz. Lastly, add an ISR component to the interrupt terminal of the TCPWM. There's a little bit of work to be done in the firmware. Before writing the C code, you should generate the API files. In main, start the PWM and start the timer. Also, you should register the interrupt handler using start EX and make sure the global interrupts are enabled. Above main, create the interrupt handler. Write the code to read the value of the timer. This is the number of milliseconds that the switch was pressed. Write that value into the PWM compare register and it will vary the brightness of the LED. If you're detail obsessed, like me, you'll worry that the timer may return a value greater than 10,000 if the switch is pressed for over 10 seconds. And that's absolutely true. Since the PWM has a maximum period of 10,000, that would mean that the compare value is greater than the period. This would result in leaving the LED fully lit. But this is not really a good coding practice. So you should add a check of the timer value and make sure that it can't exceed 10,000. Lastly, clear the capture interrupt with the clear interrupt function. The argument for the compare event is timer component name underscore INTR underscore mask underscore CC underscore match. Yes, that's quite a few underscore this is, but that's the way it is. Program this into your board and play with it to verify that it works correctly. If you press the switch really fast, then the LED will be bright. If you press and hold the switch, it will be very dim. As an extra test, why don't you modify the design so instead of reading the time of the pulses, read the time between pulses of the switch. As always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com.